up in my room waiting on you. That was Chad Simon right there thinking about you, and he's sitting right next to me. But we're also joined by James Smart, who's an expert when it comes to kind of safety and precautionary measures, what you could do if you were ever caught up in that situation. And of course, the situation we're talking about is one that Chad found himself in two months ago when uh, he was a victim of a failed hijacking, but he did get shot. And uh, fortunately, he did survive the situation, and he is here with us. Good morning to both of you, gentlemen. Good morning. Very good, morning. good to have you here. Now, Chad, I, I want to just try and relate it first from a, 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 a first hand perspective. Yeah. If you could just tell us what exactly happened. Uh, uh, in those kind of moments there? So I was waiting outside a friend of mine's place, uh, parked on the left side of the road, and it had been six minutes and he hadn't responded to my message. I saw a car pull up in my blind spot, and immediately I started my car. I just got this, this you know, just this instinct. Feeling. Instinct. I started my car, put my hand in my, um, on the gear lever, and I was getting ready to go, just in case I needed to. He came over to the car quickly, and at this point, it could have been anything. You know, it could have been asking for directions, it could have been whatever. and. In, in, a, in a matter of split seconds, I saw the gun, got into gear, and I raised my arm, he hit on the window, and as I was about to accelerate, he shot me in, in the right side of my ribs, yeah. Oh, wow, that, I mean, James, just hearing that story, it kind of just sends chills through your, your, your body. Now, you're an expert. We know you from uh, <laughs> our self-defense uh, kind of classes that we have in the kids in the mornings, but you're an expert in these kind of situations. You can, you can advise us um, sure. as to how mm -hmm. to deal with this. Now, firstly, Chad luckily had the instinct at that moment Absolutely. when he saw the car pulling up. Yep. But let's, let's go to before that. Yeah. Are there any precautionary measures that one can take when you're at home to make sure that you are aware of these kind of situations? Um, yeah, tr you know, tra the first of all, training on these kind of things is really difficult to get. There's not a lot of training out there. Um, and it's not so much, you know, it's not so much when you're at home yeah. that makes a difference. It's when you're out and about. Your avoidance and awareness, your ability to be aware of your surroundings. I was saying to Chad earlier that there's, there's four very, there's a, there's a whole myriad of things that you should be taking into account on a daily basis. But if, when I'm doing talks and seminars, I, I find that too much information is, is too much. Yeah. So um, I've broken it down into four key things. And interestingly, talking to Chad, he actually did some of it right and got some of it not quite right. Mm -hmm. um, the, the four key things, task fixation is the biggest problem that we have in our daily life with all criminal interaction. Okay, and I call criminal task interaction. Fixation. Task fixation. What is that? Facebook, Twitter, texting. Yeah. Chad texted ah, his friends. Yeah. Um, finding car keys. You know, we're, we're out. We, we pull up outside uh, at a traffic light. You know, we pull out a, up at traffic lights. And we'd received a text two minutes ago. Now we know we can't drive in text. So what do we do when we get to the traffic lights? Text. Yeah. Okay, task fixation right there. We're making ourselves open to the possibility of attack. Um, now, there's what I call involuntary and voluntary task fixation. Involuntary task fixation might be the kids going crazy in the back and a parent having to, sit, having to tell the kids to behave themselves. Yeah. We can't deal with that, but we can be in control of what we do and what we occupy ourselves with. Having the keys ready for our gate before we get to the gate. Yeah. You know, that makes so much sense because there's a very vulnerable point in time right there where you're stationary, you're in a channelized area. In other words, an area where you're boxed in mm -hmm. and you're sat finding the keys and waiting for the gate to open perfect opportunity for someone to attack. So task fixation is the biggest problem. Don't receive help and don't give help. Now, I know that sounds really yeah, kind of I rough, mean, you Yeah, because I, I mean, many of the times you drive on the highway at, you know, let's say nine o'clock in the evening, yes. and there's someone stuck on the road, and right. you kind of feel it's, it's your civil duty to help yeah. them out, especially, let's say, if it's a lady. It your is. first instinct is, is to go and help. It is. It's your civil duty to help. In other words, to phone the police. They're the ones that are that are professionals, okay. they're the ones that are capable of helping, okay? There's things that go on right now in South Africa, um, leaving a baby seat on the side of the road with a dummy baby in it, okay? Why do they do that? To make predominantly women stop and feel they need to help this baby. A child on the side of the road hitting a, hitting a dog makes us want to stop. Why do we want to stop? Because we have a duty. We feel yeah, yeah. deep inside us that we need to help. Yeah. Yeah. But we shouldn't, because a lot of the time that's just a, a, a place where someone is, is ready to launch an attack. In other words, they're the criminals are trying to get us on what they call the X, the point, the place that they have planned to be able to launch the attack. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So don't give help. Phone the police. You're giving help is phoning the police. Yeah. Okay? Um, don't receive help. Very, very commonly, we, you know, we feel awkward about saying to someone, oh, no, actually, it's okay, I don't need help. Especially, and I go back to women again, but um, let's set the scenario. Lady, she's come out of the shops, it's 9 o'clock at night, she's yeah. in the shopping mall, she goes to the car park. Okay? A guy walks up to her and says, hey, can I help you with all those bags? Now, as a woman, and, and even guys, we feel awkward about saying no. Yeah. But hang on a minute, think about this. Does the shopping mall 
employ someone to walk around the car park looking to help people with their bags. No. No, 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 no one does. So why is someone offering to help? Yeah. Apropos of absolutely nothing. Yeah. And you know, the, the chilling thing when I was kind of reading through the research is, is to know that these criminals are just as professional and yeah. as <clears throat> expert at planning their tasks yes. as, as anyone else would be. And I mean, you, know, you, you think of your situation yeah. that happened, where, where it happened, it might seem random, yeah. but these guys have probably been eyeing out mm -hmm. the spot for a while and it's like their <clears throat> kind of hotspot, right? Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing, they probably weren't even eyeing out the spot, they were actually eyeing out Chad. There's, there's what we call an interview, okay? And Chad actually realized when I was talking to him that it's quite possible, and partly because of his task fixation, yeah. po quite possible that, that they had already driven past him once. There's what we call a correlation of movement. Yes. Before any attack, whether it's a hijacking or an attack of any sort, there's always a correlation of movement. And what, what do I mean a correlation of movement? A, 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 uh, in Chad's situation, a blind spot. They'd driven past, they'd realized that he was sat, they possibly saw him texting at that point in time, yeah. and they went, Beautiful. Wow. So there was a correlation of movement already. They, they pulled up to his, uh, his blind spot, executed their plan. Now, because of Jad's intuition, and the biggest thing that he got so right was that he listened to his intuition. He realized he's, he knew something was wrong, something yeah. inside told him yeah. was wrong. He switched his engine on, he jammed it into first gear. Beautiful, amazing. Now, if he had have also played the don't give help, yeah. okay? In other words, he thought, but they might be asking directions. I don't care. Yeah. It's, it's six o'clock at night, it's dark, I have no idea who they are, you know, I'm just going to drive on as if I hadn't seen them. Wow. Okay? Yeah. yeah. It would have been amazing. Now, so he got so much right, and his intuition being the biggest part of the, the bit that he got right. Yeah. And just a couple of little things and the, the, the situation would have been different. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's just a little portion of what we're going to be talking about today. Of course, you're welcome to call us on 083-913-3728 and ask Chad any question that you wish to ask him regarding the situation. He's very, very happy to answer it. We're going to be finding out what to do when you are caught up in that kind of situation later on. We'll be right back after this ad break.